World Horse Welfare is coming up to its uh, centenary in, 19, in 2027. We were founded back in 1927 as a campaigning organisation. Well, the vision of the charity is where every horse is treated with respect, compassion and understanding. And that's, you know, 150 million globally. And there are some real challenges there, getting policy makers and governments to recognise the role of equines, getting people who own equines to have the basic understanding of what they need to be able to do that. So it is a real challenge. But we believe through our sort of activities of caring for horses through research so we can make sure what, what we're doing is, is informed by the latest evidence through education and ultimately through campaigning because that's where we can reach the most number of horses because if we can change policy and legislation and regulation that will impact millions of horses. Alongside the headquarters of the charity is one of their rescue and rehoming facilities, Hall Farm. So my name is Sue Hodgkins and I'm the centre manager here at Hall Farm, have been since 2007. My main responsibilities is to oversee the day-to-day -day organisation and running of the farm. The range of horses we have on the farm are so diverse, they come from such different backgrounds and situations. Some of them come in and they've just got physical problems and they're relatively straightforward to deal with. They've been handled, they're used to human interaction, so they're relatively easy to work with and to treat and to deal with. But we are seeing a growing number of horses that come into us from large groups with herd dynamics that have had absolutely no human contact whatsoever. So they're virtually feral when they come into us. For the grooms who deal with the horses on a daily basis, it is challenging yet rewarding work. I think definitely taking perspective, um, kind of their background, so where have they come from? Obviously not, we don't always know, so we never assume that they can do everything um, that, I mean, any normal horse as such would. So we kind of always go with them a bit of caution um, and just kind of predict what they could or might do when we're around them. Um, which is a bit different than, you know, your everyday yard, being more on the handling side of things. It's definitely when I can start off a youngster or a feral horse we've got in and then kind of seeing them progress through the stages. I think that's the most rewarding part for me. So one of the advantages of rehoming from World Horse Welfare is we retain ownership of the horses. And what that means for the rehomer is they have a permanent support network through the field offices and through the team of staff back at the farms. But I think what's really nice for the rehomers is if for any reason their circumstances change and they're no longer able to keep the horse on loan, they know they have the backup plan of being able to send the horse back into the farm that they've rehomed it from. It's not only the UK where the charity are present, it truly is a global cause. So we've got a big focus in Central America, in Africa, and increasingly in, now in Asia. And as, you know, when we, there's so many animals, 112 working million working equids, you know, it's it's a, a real challenge to get even to a, a, a tiny proportion of them. So we recognise that we have to have really important sort of community-based projects. So we're actually in the community, understanding the challenges that people face on a day-to-day -day basis. But then you've got to scale that up and be able to work at a global level, through the United Nations, through the European Union and other national governments to be able to, to get them to understand the relevance of equines. So our work predominantly within uh, lower middle income countries is working with equine owners, but also what we call service providers. And that is, especially with vets, the training of vets is so important and for them to have a basic understanding of equine needs and, um, and, and so on. So we, we uh, in the places like Mexico, have a really good relationship with a number of different veterinary universities, because that's where obviously the process starts, but then providing training on the ground as well. Another example is the training of saddlers and farriers which is a, so important in terms of working equines. That's where their biggest welfare concerns are around their, the condition of their feet and the saddlery that they're given to do their jobs. 
And so, for example, we had um, a, a guy called Victor who was 21, disabled, obviously finding life very tricky, but had a real uh, uh, skill with his hands. And we were able to set him up, uh, train him as a saddler, help him set up a, a, a saddlery business. And now in his local community, he's providing a sustainable business for himself, his family, but also to the working equid um, owners in, in his communities. And it's those kind of stories that really inspire us to be able to go out and tell the story and promote the support that we need to be able to do the work that we do.